Let me show you how I edited this panoramic image using only Lightroom step by step. If you want to follow along, feel free to download all the raw files from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So let's assume you already imported all the images. Your film strip should look something like this. The first step is to merge the panoramic image. So I'm going to select all images down in the film strip, then right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose panorama. Lightroom will generate a preview for us and here we can do a bunch of different things. First we can select a projection method. Usually I'm going with one of the upper two, so spherical or cylindrical. The difference between these two you can see the first one is kind of being a wider panoramic image while the second projection method kind of stretches the image more in the vertical orientation. I think this is looking much much better for this image so I'm going with this one. What we can do as well is to use boundary warp which will kind of morph the image so we don't have any gaps in here. The problem is if you have a visible horizon in the image and this horizon will not be straight. It will kind of bend so that will be a huge issue. I usually don't use the boundary warp for that reason. We can fill the edges if you want which as you can see Lightroom will generate some weird stuff in here. I'm also not going to use this setting. Usually I use generative fill in Photoshop if I want to fill any gaps later on in the editing process. We can also auto crop which of course automatically will crop the panorama and we can use auto settings which will adjust exposure for us. Both things we don't need. Once this preview is loaded and we have chosen a projection method the next step is to hit the merge button to merge the panorama. Lightroom will then create a new file for us on which we can now work this one right here. So let's start this. The very first thing I'm going to do is to crop it. So let's go into the cropping menu. I want to slightly rotate it because the horizon isn't really even. I think something like this looks much better. Now we want to kind of filter out some of these unnecessary areas in this image. We don't need that much of the bottom area but I want to keep this little puddle right here. I think that's fitting nice in the scene. I'm also going to take out a bit from the left side and I'm taking out a bit from the right side as well. I'm going to further rotate it. All right, composition wise, I'm quite happy with that. So let's get out of the cropping menu. Another thing I like to do for my panoramic images is to go into the transform panel right here. What we can do here is to adjust a bunch of different sliders. For example, I want to work on the aspect. So if I bring this down, I can kind of stretch the image more in its width. And I think making it a little longer like this looks pretty good. So I want to bring down the aspect like that. And I also think we can use the vertical slider to further help balancing the composition. What I mean by that is I'm going to bring down the vertical slider. You can see this will make the back appear to be a little bit bigger while kind of shrinking the foreground. So let me go with something like this. I'm quite happy with that. Once we have done the transformation, again, I want to go back into the cropping menu because now we can further take out a bit from the very bottom part. I'm going to also take out a bit from the top because those gaps would be hard to fill otherwise. Other than that, the composition is quite good now. So. There we have it, we are done with the cropping. Now we can continue with cleaning up the image first before we start with the cool stuff. So let's go ahead, open up the remove tool right here. I'm using the remove mode and make sure to use generative AI. Because I want to get rid of this house on the right side, I'm just brushing over this thing with the remove tool. I'm also brushing over this part and the road sign right here and in this one as well. Once I'm done selecting all the objects I want to remove, I hit remove. All right, that's looking much cleaner. And now that we have set up our panoramic base image, it's time to start work on the exposure. So let's expand the basic panel and I'm going to start by changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will bring up the base saturation and I want this image to be colorful. So that's the perfect base for our image. Now, what about the exposure? I do want to keep this image rather dark, but first I need to bring up the exposure in order to restore some of these details from the darkest parts of the image, because that just looks better. At the same time, because we're raising the exposure, we're also making the brighter areas of the image brighter, which is a problem. As you can see here, we don't have much detail in the sky and in the river right here running through the foreground. 
In order to restore details, we're going to bring down the highlights. And just like that, it looks much, much better. I'm also going to bring up the shadows just to help restore some more details in the darkest parts. And I'm also going to bring up the blacks for that. Okay, exposure wise, it's looking really, really good. I do want to apply a very soft, dreamy look on top. So I'm going to bring down the clarity, making everything softer. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze, again, helping with that glow effect. Keep in mind, reducing dehaze will make the image look brighter. I'm also going to add a little bit of texture just to make the image look sharper. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance for stronger colors. And that's pretty much our image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before. You can see a big, big difference already, especially in the darker parts of the image with much more details, but also in the river running through the foreground, where we can now see some more detail in that white water, which is really, really important to make this shot look awesome. Next up, we're going to use masking to further enhance specific areas. So let's click on that masking panel right here. And I want to start with a landscape mask. Click on landscape. The very first thing I want to change is that river in the foreground. Therefore, all I need to do is to select water right here. I don't know why it's selecting parts of the sky. It didn't do that when I first tried this. I don't know. Anyway, let's click on create mask and I'm going to subtract using a brush and I'm just getting rid of the sky. I don't know. I really don't know what's going on here. But now we have a perfect selection for that river. I want to add more contrast to this part to have more details. Let's start by simply raising the contrast. Also, I'm going to bring down the highlights. This will reveal further detail in this part. All right, that's looking great. At the same time, I want to further push the contrast by bringing up the whites without losing too much details. So we really need to be careful here. But there is another way with which we can bring out details. And that's by raising texture. I'm going to raise it quite a bit here and I'm also going to use clarity. And here we can go really, really crazy. Let me pump it up. So just like that, we have much more detail and made the river look much more awesome. We could also bring up the saturation just to bring out some of those cold blue tones in here. Perfect. Now let me work on the sky. I want to add a little bit of glow coming from behind those trees. I'm going to start with a sky selection. Let me intersect this mask by clicking on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose radial gradient. Now I'm just targeting the part right behind those trees. And that's the area which I want to make brighter. Therefore, I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little bit. Be careful to not introduce any clipping in the brightest parts. I'm also going to bring up the blacks. Again, just making this area brighter. I'm going to drop the dehaze very gently making the sky in that part look softer. And just to be safe, I'm going to bring down the highlights. All right, I'm going to stack another radial gradient on top. Let me create a new mask and choose radial gradient. Let me create one like this. I'm making sure to overlap those trees in order for the glow effect to be more convincing. And I'm going to bring up the exposure first, just a little bit. Then I am going to bring up the blacks and let me also drop the dehaze to make this glow effect stronger. Okay, I think that's looking really, really good. But I want to add a radial gradient to this mask right away. Because I want this glow effect also to, to be visible right here in the gap to the left. Just like this. Just a hint of glow in there as well. Perfect. But I not only want to add glow to the sky, I also want to make the top part of the sky darker. So again, we're going to start with the sky selection. And this time I'm going to subtract a linear gradient, taking out a big chunk from the bottom part like this. And now what I'm going to do is to drop the exposure heavily to create a very dark dramatic sky. All right, I really like that effect. Let's also bring up the contrast a bit. Beautiful. Maybe let's raise this linear gradient just a tiny bit more, but that's looking perfect. Now it's also time to work on the landscape. I'm going to use another landscape mask for that. In here, I want to choose the vegetation just to target all those green tones in this image. So with that selection made, let's click on create mask. 
Again, we need to fine tune it by subtracting with a brush. I'm going to brush out this part at the top. Now, what I want to do is to bring up the saturation first, making all the green tones a bit more intense. Then I want to bring up the contrast, kind of making the vegetation a tiny bit darker. But at the same time, I'm going to bring up the whites. This way, we again kind of push the contrast in that part specifically. And I'm also going to bring down the shadows again, just to further push the contrast. That's looking awesome. Now I'm quite happy with the upper part of the image, but the bottom area needs some work as well, because at the moment those bright rocks right here in the foreground are kind of distracting. So I want to use a linear gradient and let me cover those rocks like this. I'm going to add another linear gradient for the right side. Let me subtract a linear gradient. So just to really target those bright rocks. And I'm also going to subtract a radial gradient gradient to not affect this puddle right here too much. Then what I'm going to do is to bring down the exposure and this will help guide the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image. That's looking really really good. I'm also going to use a radial gradient covering this kind of bright spot on the left side. Because this is too bright again I want to make it darker so I'm going to drop the exposure and this way I'm kind of balancing how the image feels to the eye. So the viewer is not immediately drawn to the brighter area on the left side, if that makes sense. But other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with the masking stuff for now. Let me turn off all those masks to see the difference from before to after. That's looking much, much better with a clear flow through the image. So next up, let's do some color grading. And I don't think there's much to do, but let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. I want to work on the hue first. I just want to bring down the orange hue, which will affect the rocks in the foreground in a very nice way, making those orange tones look a bit more red. At the same time, I'm also going to bring down the yellow hue. Again, just affecting the foreground this way. And then let me see, I might want to bring down the blue hue, giving the blue tones of this image more of a cyan color tone. All right, then let's go ahead, open up the saturation panel. I want to bring up the saturation for the orange tones for a more colorful foreground. But at the same time, I really don't want to overdo it with those tones in here. Therefore, I'm going to bring down the yellow saturation, which will create a really nice balance in the foreground. I'm also going to bring down the green tones just a little bit. And let's bring down aqua like that. Instead I'm going to raise the blue tones because that is a color that is really really important to the image. All right, I'm also going to work on the luminance for a moment. I'm going to slightly drop the orange luminance which will make the foreground a little bit darker and let me bring up the yellow luminance. You can see it will affect this puddle right here in the foreground making it brighter. I think that looks really really good so I'm going to push the yellow luminance because of that. I'm also going to push the green luminance just to add some more punch to the foliage in the back. Perfect. Then let me go down into the calibration tab. Here what I want to do is to bring down the blue primary hue. That's just something I do for all my images because I really love this effect it has on the colors and I'm going to bring up the saturation as well. Alright, that's it for the color grading. Now let's sharpen the image in the details panel. I'm going to bring down the radius, then let's bring up the details. I'm also going to apply some masking. I'm making sure to hold down the Alt key so we can see where the sharpening will be applied. And then let's increase the amount of sharpening. And we are done editing this image in Lightroom. Of course, there is still this gap towards the top of the image, which we haven't fixed yet. I'm going to use Photoshop for that, because doing this in Lightroom is just super annoying. So let's right click on the image, go to edit in and choose edit in Photoshop. And what I'm doing now is to hold down control and click on the layer thumbnail. This will give us a selection of this layer except for the gaps at the top. Now to select those gaps I'm hitting control shift I which will invert the selection. Then to just to be safe I'm going to select modify and choose expand. I'm going to expand this selection by 4 pixels. This will make sure I'm slightly overlapping the image and this will make sure we are filling all the gaps there are. 
Then with the selection active, all I need to do is to hit on generate to fill and hit generate. And there we have the finished image. So I hope this little tutorial about how to create panoramic images in Lightroom will be helpful for your photography. If you want to support this channel, make sure to like and maybe even comment on this video. If you have any questions left, let me know as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.